This is my completely DIY motion simulator. Building this has taken over a year to finish and it has quickly become one of my favorite projects of all time. In previous videos, I showed how this thing was built and how it could be used to fly RC planes in a totally new immersive way by mapping the movements of the plane directly to the pilot's chair. After I published that video, I read the comments and realized that this thing needs rudder pedals. So I added those and then used this thing to fly a quadcopter which had head tracking FPV. This was a really crazy experience. To make everything even more realistic, I replaced the homemade controls with store-bought USB-based controls. I tested these by using it to control my transforming quadcopter in both flying and driving mode. And this worked great. And all of that brings us to right now. In this video, I'm gonna show you how this thing can be used as a motion platform for flight simulator games, and also announce that I'm open sourcing parts of this project. That way other people can build this and have just as much fun with it as I have. This is by far the cheapest and maybe the only option for a platform that can do all of this. I'll go into more detail about where you can get the files and all the code and things like that later in the video. But for right now, let's rewind and I'll show you how this thing was built and how it works. Now, most of this design is actually just made of wood, which makes it very approachable for hobbyists. The base of everything is this pyramid shape and it has a universal joint on top, which allows the chair platform to move in two axes. This universal joint is actually just from a steering system of a car, so they're very cheap and easy to purchase online. The chair platform itself is also just made of wood, which makes it lightweight, and then an old gaming chair of mine made the perfect seat for the pilot to sit in. If you want to get extra fancy, you can add a harness like I did, which makes the whole experience a little more immersive, but it's definitely not necessary. Safety first. The motion of this system is what makes it special, but the system that controls it is actually shockingly simple. Two stepper motors are attached to gearboxes, which gives them a lot more torque. Then a control arm is fitted to each gearbox, which allows it to move the chair using two linkages. One of these motors controls the pitch of the chair, and the other one controls the roll axis. To control these motors, two closed loop stepper drivers are used, as well as a TC 4.0 and a Raspberry Pi. When this chair is controlling an RC plane, it takes inputs from the joystick, the throttle, and the rudder pedals, and combines them together into one PPM signal. Then, using just a normal RC transmitter, that PPM signal can be used as a trainer signal, which can then control the plane. This is awesome because then a spotter can have that RC transmitter in their hand and take over if the chair acts up or if the pilot in the chair is just a pilot in training. To actually move the chair in the same directions as the plane, it needs the telemetry data. And that is all sent down using these telemetry radios. The data goes from the radio to a laptop and then to the chair over USB. Despite all of the different inputs and signals and devices talking to each other in this chair, I have found it's very reliable. However, what happens when you don't want to fly in the real world? This could be because you live in an area where you can't fly RC planes, or maybe it's just terrible weather outside. More rain. Or maybe you're like me and sometimes you're just too lazy to leave the house. Well, that is where flight sim mode comes in. By just switching the USB controls from being plugged into the Raspberry Pi to being plugged into a PC, and keeping that same USB cord for sending data from the PC to the chair, you can now fly in a lot of flight simulator games and still have motion simulation. All right, so the chair is completely set up with the TV all set up for flight sim mode. So let's test this thing out. Let's see if we can just take off on a plane. Now all we gotta do is pick an airport and an airplane and take off. All right, Seattle. Seattle airport. It's as good as any, right? All right, let's do this. So as I fly the plane in the flight simulator, the chair will move based on the data coming from the game. So it should feel really immersive. Loading, 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 loading. Hurry up. Hey, here we go. All right. So, should be able to just increase the throttle. Oh yeah, we're rolling. All right, keep it centered on the runway. Try not to get into a crash here. And then slowly lift off. Oh yeah. It's crazy how much you can feel the chair moving. Do a nice roll. <laughs> that feels so awesome. Oh yeah. If you like flight sim stuff, this is an absolute game changer. There. 
And right now I have this chair being pretty gentle. You can actually adjust it and tune it to be however you like. So you can make it pretty aggressive if that's how you like to fly. All right, let's see, let's see a big roll here. Oh. <laughs> this makes everything feel so much more realistic. All right, here we go. Steep climb. 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 80 degrees angle of attack. Oh, and we stalled, and we stalled, uh-oh. But get the nose down. Oh yeah, we're good. Now we're in Seattle, so let's go see the Space Needle. Let's see it right there, we're gonna do a nice little flyby. Ha, there it goes. That's awesome. Flight sims are so much fun. All right, let's see what this thing feels like in a dive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, pull out of it, pull out of it, pull out of it. Oh God, okay. Having the motion simulation from the game makes it so immersive. This is something that everyone needs to try. But something that helps out a lot is having the screen up close. I used a very cheap 4K TV that I bought a while ago at like Target, and then I cantilevered it out in front of the chair using some aluminum extrusion. All right, so putting this big screen on here makes it really difficult to get in and out of the chair. So I designed this hinge mechanism that allows you to pick up the TV and then pick it up enough to clear this bar and swivel outwards. So this works really well because now I can just step right in here and boom, I'm in. All right, so let's talk about how you guys can build this too. I spent a lot of time assembling documentation, including parts list, wiring diagrams, and code, which can all be referenced by anyone completely for free. And I'll put the link to that in the description below. If you appreciate giving this stuff away for free, and you really wanna support the channel, the best way to do that is with Patreon, which I will also link down in the description below. This stuff seriously takes a lot of time, but I really want other people to try this as well, so I wanna minimize the barrier to entry as much as possible. Additionally, I know from comments and questions I've gotten in the past that the electronics side of things can be pretty daunting. So to clean up a lot of the wiring, I designed these PCBs, which do most of that for you, and it connects the Teensy to the Raspberry Pi, and has a bunch of connectors, which just makes everything a lot nicer. So this is what that PCB looks like once it's completely filled out with components. You can see all the different parts right there, and this takes care of all the wiring. I even got a little fancy and put the silk screen of the chair on the back. Ooh, very nice. If you'd like one of these for your build, I did order a few extra, so I'm gonna put them up for sale and you can find that link down in the description below as well. When you look through the files for this project, you'll notice that all the CAD was done in Onshape, which makes them really easy to share and they're also the sponsor of this video. Onshape is an entirely cloud native CAD platform that I've been using for a couple years now. It has all the features needed to create really complex designs like this and it streamlines the whole process because there's no clunky files and it has really robust version control. All your designs can be completely parametric, which makes updating features really easy. And you can even fork things and make new versions just like on GitHub. Because everything is on the cloud, you can also just pull up your design on your phone and take measurements or just reference how things go together, which has been really convenient for my projects. Onshape also makes sharing files much easier. If you guys are gonna build this chair for yourself, all you need to do is open up the link in the description below with my Onshape file, and then you can copy it to your workspace and make your own changes. They also have some really cool stress analysis tools that I've used in the past, as well as an entire cam studio. Onshape is free to use, and I honestly can't recommend it enough. So check it out using the link in the description below and use it for your next project. One last minute upgrade I made to this chair, which actually made it so much better, was adding a subwoofer underneath it, which is actually called a butt kicker. These replicate a lot of small vibrations, such as engine noise, and makes everything so much more immersive. The best way to demonstrate this is actually by putting a glass of water on the armrest, and you can see how much it vibrates. All right, so now what I wanna try is what's called a landing challenge. So I'm playing Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 here, and they have a bunch of challenges where you land a plane and then it gives you a score. So I'm gonna do this one, which is landing a 747 at JFK Airport, which is in New York City. Wish me luck. I am not a pilot at all, but we'll give it a shot. All right, so the game should put me in the air already. And all I have to do is follow this path and land the plane. Fingers crossed. <laughs> These are big planes. Also having the motion of the chair for this type of stuff makes it way harder. It's more realistic, but way harder for these games. All right, we're in the air. 
All right. You see, there's our plane. The gear is not down. Let's put the gear down. Ooh, look at that. The graphics in this game are so good. That's so cool looking. All right. We probably need to decrease altitude a bit. Wow, this plane flies so slow and methodical. <laughs> it feels like you're driving a big bus, which I guess is what it is. Okay, let's try to use some rudder here. It does not want to go down. Oh yeah, there she is. Oh, okay, we're tilted. Do we have a crosswind? This feels like it's flying very weird. All right, maybe I'm just making excuses. Wow, this plane is way harder to fly than the other one I was flying. Why am I getting nervous? <laughs> Coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Please buckle your seatbelt. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. I think we're looking pretty good here. Coming in semi on track. Is this the right runway? It feels kind of short. Guess we'll find out. All right. Wow, it feels like we're going so slow because this airplane is so big. All right. Oh, we're sinking a little fast. Pull up, pull up. Pull up. Oh. Brakes. We touched down a little bit early for sure. But we are on the ground. You know what they say, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. All right, let's come to a stop and see what our score is. One ninety six. I got a C. That's a passing grade. I got a one ninety six, and the best score is one hundred and sixty five thousand. That's terrible. Well, maybe that's why I'm not a pilot. I guess. Anyway, though, this thing is a lot of fun. I can't emphasize enough. If you're into flight simulators or any sort of flying game, and you want a more realistic experience, you should build this. This thing's awesome. This chair is so much fun, and I'm really happy with how this project turned out. Currently, this chair supports flying any RC plane that can be flown with a trainer signal but it can only replicate the movements of the plane if it has Mavlink telemetry. This is something that can definitely be expanded on in the future. And one benefit of the more open source nature of this project is that other people can contribute to the code base and expand the capabilities further. For games on the flight sim side of things, I've tested out both Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and 2024, and I've also gotten it to work with War Thunder. It should be very easy to adapt this to work with DCS or X-Plane if those are the games you play. All you need to do is write a Python script that gets data from the game and sends it to the chair over a serial port. And I've put more details about this in the documentation. This project has been absolutely amazing. And my favorite part has been seeing how people react when they try it for the first time. I'm very scared. I have no idea how this is gonna go. You'll see oh my pitches God. and rolls. Oh my gosh. Whoa, dude, this is not- hey! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, from the tree. Dude, I landed in a tree. And I can't wait to see what other people do with it as well. If you're looking for a fun, challenging project to do, this one honestly could be it. Especially if you're into flying either RC planes, real planes, or just simulated planes. Trust me, you'll have so much fun using this chair. Anyway, that's gonna wrap up this project. As of now, this is the last video in this series, but let me know if you guys wanna see more. Uh, there's always more I can do with this. So if you guys have any great ideas, let me know, and I might do that. But as always, thanks for watching the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.